everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. I'm Lindsay, your host for the Heavy Metal Journal, and I'm also a writer for thisdayinmetal.com. And today I am back with yet another New Metal Monday, where I talk about my favourite new releases of the week. And I have more than three albums this week. I've had three albums consistently for about two months now, I think. It's been a few weeks at least anyway, but I'm happy to confirm that today I have four. <laughs> I have four brand new albums that I want to talk about this week. But as always, before I begin, check out the description box below where you will find a Spotify playlist, which will feature every single album that I talk about in my New Metal Monday videos. Unless it is a Bandcamp only release, in which case I'll get that noted down in the description box. So, so if you do use Spotify, make sure to follow that playlist. But if you don't use Spotify, don't worry about it because I will also include all of the band's Bandcamp pages or YouTube channel links as well, just so you guys can find the music that I'm talking about as easily as possible. There will also be a link down there to all of the album reviews, the special feature articles, the interviews and the breaking news in the metal world for this day in metal.com as well. So all of that will be in the description box below. But like I said, I have four brand new albums that I want to talk about and I'm just going to jump straight in. So very first on my list, of course, I have My Dying Bride with Immortal Binding and it's the 15th studio album from the UK based doom death metal icons. I cannot put into words how much I love this band. I discovered them when I was about 13, 14 years old. I'm 35 now, so I've loved them for a really, really long time. And this album is definitely one of my favorite albums of them that they've written so far. Now, if you follow me online, you'll know that I've written a full album review, breaking down the entire record track by track in a lot more detail for this day in metal, which is linked down below. But I also had the absolute privilege of speaking to their original guitarist, Andrew, in an interview where we talked about the writing process process, the recording process, everything to do with Immortal Binding. We also spoke about what his top five essential metal albums are and the controversy surrounding them cancelling all of their live shows for 2024, which they have now put out an official statement about. So you'll find all of the information for everything to do with the My Dying Bride camp in the This Day in Metal link that I've put in the description box below. But anyway, on to the actual album itself. There's something incredibly muscular and commanding about this record, but it's every bit as melancholic, gloomy, dark, dramatic and very mournful, the exact style that My Dying Bride are known for. But uh, like I said, there is something incredibly muscular and commanding about it. The riffs in particular take centre stage on this record. The guitar work in this is incredible. Yes, it has all of that doomy, kind of dark, elegant gloom about it that My Dying Bride are so expert at, but the guitar work in this is out of this world. Really muscular, heavy, chugging riffs, but still maintaining all of that elegant beauty. It is a very, very dark record, and it is incredibly mournful, as we all expect for My Dying Bride, but there is something in particular about this record. It is very heavy on the harmonies and the melodies, but the dramatic force and the melancholic atmosphere in this is just sublime. I had high expectations for this record and I was not disappointed. In fact, my expectations were completely blown out of the water. It was everything I had hoped for and more. So if you like your metal with a dark, doomy, gloomy, melancholic element that is incredibly mournful and it does sound like a funeral march but really epic, heavy, chuggy riffage and ethereal synthy keyboard moments, not to mention the violins, I can't forget about the violins. You're definitely going to want to get onto this one, especially if you also like bands such as Anthema or Paradise Lost, Woods of Your Priests, these kind of bands, definitely get onto this but honestly this is probably my favourite My Dying Bride album so far in their career. They have an extensive back catalogue of 15 albums so far. I adore their early stuff and I loved their last album despite how heavy it was for them to create 
but this album they are definitely on to something so definitely check it out okay so next up on my list i have atrabilis atrabilis I'm going to go with Atrabilis with Homicide and it's the second studio album from the Canadian technical death metal band. Now, the way that I describe this record is deliciously dissonant and disturbing in the best way possible. This record is so unnerving and it's designed to make you feel uncomfortable. You know when you develop a morbid curiosity for something? I'm probably just outing myself here, but hear me out. When you develop a morbid curiosity for something and you just want to Google everything about it, you want to know all of the information about it and it becomes borderline obsessive, that's what this record does. And each and every time you listen to it, it constantly evolves and you discover something new from it. It is so intricately and technically precise. The guitar work in this is completely out of this world, but even though it's incredibly brutal, this is a very, very heavy record. It's very heavy going, crushing and devastating. But it's the sound effects throughout this record and the different elements that come from the guitars and it's almost otherworldly, but not in the ethereal kind of melodic death metal way. I mean really technical, extraterrestrial, alien kind of way and it just has this sense of crushing foreboding but it locks you in and you can't help but listen to this record over and over and over again and like i said it completely evolves every single time you listen to it and it just has this really ominous presence about it but it's highly addictive i've listened to this god knows how many times over the course of the weekend and each time i pick up on something new whether it's a different sound effect it's a different lyric it's a different blast beat it's a different riff every single track offers something different and it really hooks you in and keeps your attention there but the vocal style in this is brutal they're hellish i have the utmost respect for vocalists because I have no idea how they make the sounds that they do but this record in particular they are out of this world don't get me wrong it is primarily guttural demonic vocals throughout but it does have a track or two with clean vocals which are very surprising and almost cult-like religious monastic vocalizations and chants in one of the songs and it just adds this really dense foreboding atmosphere to it but if you like your heavy technical side of stuff to your metal such as a legion or even cattle decapitation fallujah psychroptic that kind of tech death style but with really dense atmosphere at the same time you're definitely going to want to get onto this one. This is a new band for me. I haven't checked out their first album as of yet, but you can guarantee that I'm definitely going to be checking it out probably after I post this video. So this is a new album for me. I am notoriously fussy when it comes to tech death. I like tech death, but I'm really, really fussy with it. But this one, I just, I didn't hesitate at all. There is something very special about this record and about this band. So definitely get onto this one. Okay, so next up on my list, I have In Vain with Solemn, and it's the fifth studio album from the Norwegian melodic progressive death metal band. Now, this record is gorgeously sprawling and so multi-layered. It's just over an hour long, so when I say it takes you on a journey, it really does take you on a journey. There is so much on offer with this record and it blends various different elements of any kind of extreme subgenre that you can think of. The vocal style backs back and forth between death metal growls, black metal screams and really gorgeous soaring clean vocals. But regardless of the style of vocals that comes up in the tracks, they are all incredibly expressive. The power and the energy behind the vocals is just incredible. Now, even though this is an incredibly multi-layered record, it's not overbearing, it's not overstimulating or chaotic. It flows really, really well. It's incredibly heavy, so all of that heaviness that you expect from death metal, black metal, melodic death metal and progressive metal is very much there. But it has the added element 
of brass instruments. I will always welcome a well-placed saxophone in metal music and this one is no exception to that whatsoever. Really catchy melodies, pummeling drums and it is very much guitar driven so if you like your guitar driven metal where there's a lot of emphasis on the solos and the riffage and the detail when it comes to the guitar you're definitely going to want to get onto this one. Now, regardless of what subgenre that you particularly like under the metal umbrella, there will definitely be something that you're going to like about this record. Like I said, it's very multi-layered, it's very dynamic, and it blends all of the elements of extreme metal into one. The orchestration, the violins, the crushing guitars, the pummeling drums, demonic vocals, death metal growls, black metal screams soaring clean vocals and just this gorgeous atmosphere with trumpets and violins and saxophones here and there as well. This is just something really, really special. It is a soundscape, like I said, it is just over an hour long, but it doesn't feel like it. Some albums, when you listen to them, you do realise, right, this is going to be going on for an hour, 90 minutes or whatever. But with this one, it seems to go by so quickly. It's not jarring. It's not a slog. It doesn't seem to go on forever. Despite the fact it is an hour long, it flows so well. And next thing you know, you're at the end of the album. And then you have to listen to it again. Because again, it's one of these albums that just offers something different. It offers something more and new every time you listen listen to it and honestly it gets better and better. So if you are a fan of the likes of Borkner or Opeth, Amorphous, Enslaved, definitely get onto this one. Plus who doesn't love a saxophone when it's well placed in metal and it's so well placed in here and it's just it's so catchy. It's ridiculously catchy. Okay, so last up on my list, but certainly by no means least, and I am probably going to butcher the pronunciation of both the band and the album, so if I do, I apologise, but that doesn't diminish the fact that I loved this record, and the album artwork for it is just beautiful, and that's Hexablad with Care Morin? Care Morin. I'm going to go with that. And this is a black metal band from the US, which is the Witcher themed. So if you like the Witcher novel series, you're going to want to get onto this one. I love the Witcher and I love melodic black metal and all of black metal's derivatives. So combine the two and you've got yourself an absolute masterpiece that I'm going to be all over. So like I said, this is black metal and it's also directly inspired lyrically by the Witcher novel series, but it's also homage to the second wave of the black metal scene musically. Dark, devastating and incredibly raw with a bit of a melodic edge to it. Now, when I say that this is raw, I mean it's raw, but there is something incredibly beautiful about this record. Now, as well as that frantic black metal shreddage and a barrage of blistering blast beats and really raw, rasping screams and roars, there's something incredibly frosty and exquisite about the atmosphere, which is just cemented by beautiful orchestration and really haunting kind of waltz-like synthy keys. But it definitely does focus on the raw side of the black metal genre. And honestly, this was an absolute joy to listen to. The keyboards and the synths kind of sound like a waltz and it's very creepy and very haunting. And I absolutely loved that. The oddities in this are unreal, but again, they're really well placed and it keeps the album interesting. So if you are a fan of the likes of Emperor, Dark Funeral, Immortal, these kind of bands, you're definitely going to want to get onto this one. And that's it for this week's New Metal Monday. Once again, comment down below to let me know what you think of today's records. And if you have any of your own recommendations, get them added down there and I will definitely check them out. Make sure to follow my Spotify playlist if you don't already do so. But if you don't use Spotify, all of the band's Bandcamp links will be in the description box as well, just so you guys can find the music as easily as possible. Also make sure to check out the This Day in Metal website, which I've linked in the description box below. A few of you have messaged me about doing band interviews and things like that. I do interview bands and metal musicians. I just don't do it on this channel. 
I do it on a different channel. So make sure to subscribe to the This Day in Metal website. Everything is in the description box below where you can find my other content. You'll find my interviews, you'll find my breaking news articles to keep you updated with all of the metal news of the day. You'll also have special features by both myself and the other writers of the website. Full breakdowns of album reviews as well. There's loads on that website to check out. Thank you so much for your support. It means the absolute world to me and I will see you very soon in my next video.